love my country i love representing my country and uh, i'm enjoying it you know this was my dream like you know as i uh, as i mentioned you know i'm still in the process i'm still focusing on making more ranking better more points and uh, you know there is no final goal right now in the rural area we just went for some research and they just uh, said like you know that is cow and this cow gives milk yeah and we are not going to consume that because that's not our mother this is what i heard and i was like wow i never thought about it that way as well so when i first went vegan yeah. i had to learn the fact that we're the only mammals that drink milk from other mammals and no other mammal does that and that was pretty shocking in india there are 98% people they don't know even know they have a milk allergy i always wanted to close the things on a good note i want to stop playing then i'll i'll just stop at the best Vishwajit Sangle, India's only vegan professional international tennis player with yeah. 72 titles to your name, nine international, an athlete, an entrepreneur, and an absolute living example of what it means to go meat-free and dairy-free without that affecting your performance. Welcome to the show and thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad we're finally doing this. Yeah. <laughs> and I get to dive into all things veganism when it comes to being an athlete, sports performance, nutrition. physical agility and uh fitness of course yeah i want to start off by asking mm -hmm. why tennis over any other sport and how you got started on that journey okay so um when i started you know i started with malkam and yoga you know with the sports uh, malkam and yoga malkam is a, it's a maharashtrian sports and everyone knows like you know it's a uh, wooden pool and you have to do a lot of uh, asanas which is a uh, rep represented yogasan hmm. so yogasana was everyone knows and uh, i used to do it as a profession because i did like i think 7 to 8 8 exams and uh, I, i did nationals also and so how old were you so when i started i was 3 and 4 you were 3 years old yeah 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 So before Max. you could run, you you knew how to do yoga. Essentially, <laughs> I've been mean, uh, because of family. You know, this my mother is so into that. Like, I mean, she do. She's not a professional, but you know, she knows that importance and all. So I started with malkam and yoga and and all all those things. Uh, but uh, there's no kick, you can say. And I'm not a person who will go in the crowd, like you know, play some uh, group sp sports. Uh, like volleyball or cricket or football um, so this is this is a different story like i started with the badminton first same and, me too yeah and and my brother was playing tennis uh, my younger brother and a few months later i felt like you know tennis is so cool but and, badminton's a cool sport as well i used uh, to uh, i mean so okay <laughs> how, would you how, how can i even explain that like you know you will be like keep his thinking like to mature like in an, in the earlier age i don't want to be a tan guy like you know i really want to protect myself <laughs> and that yeah that's why i just chose badminton and i i, I still i do care about my skin i mean i don't want to look uh, i mean not being racist but you know i don't want to look like a tan boy you know because i just want to look more fresh all the time and i tennis I is i think like, that's such an indian mindset right that you go outside you're playing in the sun and this then you get tan and it's just something that yeah, is a taboo us. and the society is actually giving you that uh, you know you, you have to look in certain way and there was actually in the earlier age uh, in the school like people i know that they, they, they just you know drag you in uh, raggings or bragging about your color or you know it happens every yeah. bullying happens everywhere and, but uh, speaking of badminton yeah. indoor sport yeah so that time i was like let's play and let's continue this sports but uh, i don't know what i really felt on tennis court while running there is a, i mean there's a line in the book called open by andre agassi he said like you know i like the feeling when the hair comes in my hair and the, you know i like that that's so romanticized it yeah yeah and so i felt like you know this is what i want to do but not as a profession just as a hobby and uh, i can i can i can do that so yeah was there any support how did the family respond to you wanting to take up pro tennis professionally because it's still not as popular or widely played as cricket mm, i think they're all okay with whatever i'm, I'm going to do uh, this is what i observe you know uh, and that's called we support right you know my family is supporting whatever i'm going to do so they were all okay with it uh, because uh, I didn't make that decision to be a professional tennis player. My coach actually conveyed 
to my parents you know this this guy is actually talented and uh, my parents were like okay now they want board yeah they like want. you know what is the next step i said like where is the next state where is the next national you know how we can prepare him and next i said and my diet changed you know my sleeping routine changed my uh, you know tv shows which i used to watch like pokemon and that's it done done and all of that done it's just like you know 3 pm on court 6:30 home 7:30 eat 8 sleep and this is how it started with me and i was like wow and how old were you when you uh, started, when started playing seven you were seven years old yeah tennis yeah. and your life was as disciplined as you just described it yeah uh from the day one did you feel like you didn't get to enjoy your childhood or you didn't i did trust get me to have i did other like kids if i start had... talking about my childhood memories you will like you wow <laughs> where he was actually playing i mean uh, i did a lot of things i mean uh, it's not just you you playing every day right hmm. you know there are some days you're hanging out with your friends it's just memories right like you do lot of things out of the court and in the school also i i switch my school because of the timetable uh because uh, this timetable was like 12 to 6 and i can't train yeah. so and there was no school team you have to play dso state and zonals and xyz so i shifted to government school so called the government schools have like lot of options and i used to bunk the school like you know after three periods i'll just <laughs> vanish Uh, don't take it like you know this is not an inspirational thing <laughs> so uh, but yeah i i used to do that uh, after three to four periods i like i'm gone yeah. just for the presently i like you know i just I'm attendance yeah, i'm here attendance. for the attendance yeah. exactly just, yeah. that's so, it and disappears yeah. and no one questioned that obviously uh, no then one of one of the teacher actually re- realized you know this guy is not here <laughs> you know and they know me because i asked lot of question in the school Oh, and so you also like, had to be that kid. Yeah, and I'm good at it. It's not like I'm bad at studies because I'm choosing sports. I'm like balance. It's like he, if it's not going to happen, I'll have other options also. This is how I pursue the sports. Uh, and and meanwhile, I was doing the animation, you know, sketching, and there is some JJ school scholarship which they approach and a lot of things. I did uh, some scholarship exam in the seventh and eighth, which I got a scholarship for the Pune University uh, in the science. So. it's all good like you know nothing because uh, just my re- so in the free time i was reading you know in the busy schedule i'm playing and mm. there is some time where i have to spend i used to spend with a lot of senior guys you know how how they're actually uh, you know it's just a kid like you know who wants to uh, grow a little faster you know <laughs> want to take some responsibilities and uh, so that's actually yeah uh, so a lot of yeah. extra curricular activities and you were just trying to figure out yeah. what was working for you and yeah, yeah, what yeah. what I, wasn't working for you i mean nowadays i don't play tabla but i used to play tabla in school also oh, there's also music now yeah. it's part of that yeah yeah i did um, hindi bal bharati exams sanskrit subhashit mala um, some poem i remember poems, that yeah poems yeah. exams uh, uh, what do you call like uh, in marathi it's called like vakutra spardha is like you know elocution yeah so it just everything is happening and there was as i mentioned there are a lot of memories it's not just tennis 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 hmm. so so when did tennis overpower everything else after losing a lot of matches after losing a lot of matches yeah. that didn't waver your faith in the sport no uh, uh so when i was i mean there was not like one or two matches which i lost Uh, there's a streak i don't even remember how many matches i lost but uh, i realized my parents my coaches and the people who i'm training with they have a lot of hopes for me and i was like what i'm doing you know and uh, how i'm going to pursue this as a profession and uh, was there no me. point during those losses and those yeah. series of losses yeah. where you must have thought to yourself this is not for me and i'm not good enough no. and clearly No. This isn't working out the way I imagined. Okay, I I, I mean there is a habit. I don't know how it's actually uh, working with me, but you know and uh, I I don't even know that you know which this habit like you know how this actually uh, comes in my blood or like but I always wanted to close the things on a good note. So when I just mentioned that if I want to stop playing then I'll I'll just stop at the best. Who stops when they get to the I, would would you have stopped if you got to your best? I will. That's a satisfaction, right? Like you're done with it. So peak performance. Yeah. 
is good right i mean you will get good sleep uh, people will if they going to remember me they will remember for the best things okay so what kept you going was that you hadn't performed at your best yet i have to be very honest then i would say um, the glamour and money hmm that's the honest answer glamour and money that came that so, you thought would come from playing tennis professionally yeah but speaking of glamour and money it's not as glamorous or as lucrative as cricket is in this country see uh i i mean it sound more uh, i don't know how i'm going to uh, put this but uh, there is a there's a small towns right there is a small places there is a chawl there is a building there is a society there is a complex everyone is hero there okay at some college at some level at some of the colonies or some of the complex there is a one hero which we know and i believe if i am the hero in this one sector hmm. i'm comfortable there are multiple politicians there are multiple other leaders in the country but they are all good right you don't have to be that like oh debatable so, but okay so th- this is what i'm just thinking like you know why i really wanted to be that glamorous or uh, i'm doing good people are recognizing me i have some identity and uh, as a young kid this is what you look up to right and i was just 13 12 i mean when i just yeah. uh, considered to be a, a next xyz person from the other people um, so that time i was just 12 on 13 that time i was like you there's a lot of money and glamour and uh, people know me for you know playing really good you know people are giving me attention now that you know yeah. everyone is stopping there and just they want to talk so to me so the recognition that you were getting even as a kid yeah in the school also so i think as a kid it's all enough i mean um, after my first big injury i was like completely done with it Uh, when i had a slip disc yeah yeah when i had a slip slip disc uh, when i was 17 and 18 that time i was like yeah, i'm done but that time my parents were so like you know calling each and every doctor physio masseuse and i was like ki wow and uh, that time i was like ki i'm going to do this as a you know full time job so is the faith that other people had put in the spot for you yeah that got you back into it yeah I'm kind of a people person, you know. If someone chose me as a leader, then yes, I'm there. I'm going to fight for you. Hmm. Uh, but uh, there's some instincts also that you know I'm I'm really good at it. If I train really hard, then you know you've got it inside. Yeah. You. If glamour and money were the motivation back in the day when you were twelve or thirteen, yeah. what drives you today? Is it the same reason that still keeps you in the game? Mm, not really. Mm, I think How has that changed today? Okay, now I'm enjoying a lot. that time i was like ki i really wanted to buy this video game i really wanted to buy this shoe i would really want to buy so this is how it for the money it's the same thing glamour is like you know in the school people should give you attention right like every teacher knows you for like playing tennis and for not being present yeah i mean yeah. that's a different thing but uh, this is what you want right i mean that age how many people even remember that you know what they really want in that age yeah and i'm i'm glad that i know that you know i wanted to be parts. a cardiologist and i'm afraid of blood Can you imagine? Wow! Like, I wanted to be a cardiologist as a child. <laughs> okay, I mean yeah. that happens. Like you know, I I still uh, have a lot of peers on ground also, and uh, but uh, it's still helping me. You know, mm. psychological also because uh, when you have that tendency that you you have so much attention thing in your life, uh, if you're losing, it's so hard to deal with it. Yeah, of course. because the questions you will be like yeah, i don't want to answer that those questions what you know? do you mean uh if you're losing then people will be like ki kya hua how is happened and you know in, in india is pretty common like everybody wants to know like you know after bad times they were going to ask you like you know oh, what is going yeah, on yeah yeah in yeah. good times so oh, wow and they're not going to ask you like you know what are the what is the form- formula if it's not happening then they will bring four people with them <laughs> hey, let's see hey, what happened intervention yeah, yeah yeah how did it happen and i was like Wow. Yeah, of course. I'm going to react to that. So. Yeah. But playing tennis professionally to mm-hmm. turning vegan. Yeah. How did that happen? So, as I mentioned like uh, 16 17 was a time when I realized you know I really wanted to play this game at biggest level. I really wanted to be Was this after player. the slip disc? Yeah. Okay. During this uh, phase, not even after, during the phase. 
so there was a uh, ITF ATP there's a circuit thing right so what is that sorry so it's ITF stands for International Tennis Federation ATP st- stands for Oil Time Professionals okay so I I just got like some entry in ITF tournament uh, which is in Kyrgyzstan and I was uh, praying to God like you know recover me faster so I can play but it was not happening uh, but I don't know how I actually recovered I I still have those uh, questions uh, how I did it because it's tough to run after that also I'm lifting weights I'm still doing good yeah there are some other issues also with the d- back pain but it's not chronical hmm. so i'm i can deal with it i mean uh, i think 10 to 20 not 10 to 12 days i think i spend with the back pain or neck pain and shoulder pain and it's pretty common nowadays for me but i have to just get through it yeah, yeah. and it's habit now but uh, that time i was like ki let's focus if i get a entry then you know there is a way out and uh, i went there um, i realized you know there is something wrong with my recovery because the people and the athletes are recovering so faster which they I were can't. recovering faster than you yeah and uh, i called my nutritionist and she was like hey, come back we'll do a blood test we'll do multiple tests and we'll see what is really happening um, and uh, so you started uh, questioning what you were eating just based on the recovery time yeah because the recovery is, comes with the food you know it's not like a, a sleeping pattern that most of the people i mean nowadays my habits also i sleep 4 or 3 hours or 3 and a half hours a, a day if i'm working i'm recovering but uh, that time i was like how come this is not happening i'm sleeping 12 hours i'm eating good hmm. i'm hydrating i'm what did eating good mean back in the day what was all non veg milk everything I mean, that time it's so a lot of meat lot of dairy yeah lot of oreo shakes Oreo shakes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if if there is a royalty on Oreo, then cut it. <laughs> <laughs> so, But Oreos are vegan. Uh, I don't know. Oreos are vegan. Is it? Yeah, Oreos are vegan. It's wow. one thing that I got to keep after going vegan. Like I got to keep Oreos. <laughs> Now I know. <laughs> so definitely Good. vegan. But yeah, it's a milk thing. It's yeah, a, if you added yeah. cow milk to it, then yeah. obviously non-vegan. It's But McDonald's Oreos and Oreo milkshake is vegan. No. It's What is sorry? Vegan. It's McDonald's. Vegan. Mm, definitely no. not. Then yeah. <laughs> So I was having that every day, going to KFC with my coach. Yeah, KFC uh, also not in the yeah, vegan I, market. I, I, <laughs> I mean, they launched the this vegan KFC. They've done that now, but obviously because people are demanding it and they want to be cool and you know they don't want to get left behind. It's happening in uh, some uh, I don't know. It's in Ayodhya also, right? The vegan KFC. Ayodhya. Yeah. There's vegan KFC and uh, which I read. I'm not sure. I have no idea. I mean. But yeah, back to this. Uh, back to what uh, you were eating. Eating, and yeah. Oreos being vegan, you know that now. You can definitely yeah. eat Oreos. I, I'm not a nutritionist. I don't recommend. But I'm, Oreos. I'm just uh, I'm not taking sugar. So okay, just think. But fair. that time okay. so I was just milkshake, here. milkshake, milkshake, yeah. and uh, eating a lot of sh- chicken wings. So recovery time. Yeah. When you were 16, you noticed that you weren't recovering as fast as other athletes yeah. around you, and you started questioning that. And you called your nutritionist. What were you eating back then that didn't sit well with you? Mm, I like Oreo shakes first of all. Secondly, like chicken burger, uh, chicken wings with the KFC. So these are like go-to foods. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you're traveling outside, you know you don't know the right restaurants, right? Nowadays, yeah. I know like you know where I where I where I need to go and all. But that is like oh, I know that brand, and then I'm going to eat what I want. And it's familiar, and that's what you see wherever you travel. Yeah, and uh, I think 17 year old. Okay, maybe. I know the protein consumption and I know that the calories consumption. So I was eating a lot of food there. You just focus on calorie intake, I guess. I, still also. Yeah. But uh, we're just not consuming a lot of salt and sugar. But okay. yeah, we're just. Okay, so happening. back then it was very meat heavy. And, yeah. Uh, Because this is what heavy. my fitness trainer told me: like you have to eat a lot of non-veg. Hmm. Uh, this is what I watched on TV that you have to drink milk to have a good bones. Yeah, and when calcium. I have a, yeah, when I have a black ba- back issues, I was like, okay, I'm not consuming enough milk. But then I just started consuming this milkshake and milk product. So I was like, this is something is different which I can't explain. And I, she said, like, just come back. Okay, we'll do this test and all. I was like, okay, we'll do it. And then she realized, okay, you have a lactose problem. What test did you do? A blood saliva test. Okay. And she was like, testing for allergies. Testing for allergies. Uh, yeah. 
like complete testing thing because she she was thinking that you know during the sleep test they they give a lot of medicines yeah you know so yeah. for that also she just thought like you know because of that side effect you're just got it so we did all the possible tests i'm sure like no you have a lactose problem stop drinking less like who's going to do it like you know i'm from maharashtrian family and we have a just culture right yeah everywhere we go we have a, that uh, you know curd and sugar paneer the paneer and this i mean there's a culture yeah she said like you have to do it for a one year i stopped consuming milk and that time i was like oh god i'm just How craving you, you know you were craving dairy yeah, of yeah, course yeah, yeah. and i'm just whenever i think about milk i'm like wow wow it's cool but it's not for me uh, i don't feel like you know i mean it's not for humans at all uh, that's so what that's what actually lactose intolerance is people make it sound like that intolerance is something that's wrong with us it's yeah. almost like a disorder yeah. but humans are we're all lactose intolerant to any other milk than our own mother's milk so if you think about cow milk it's meant for its own baby it's meant for baby calf so there is a story i mean with the research i mean there's 98% percent, 98% people in india they 60% actually 60? yeah Be, no it's it's just uh, there's a article which i read on some vegan uh, uh, portal they mentioned that in india there are 98% people they don't know even know they have a milk allergy cancer hmm. sugar issues um, fatty acid it comes with the milk yeah so everyone is actually going to do, do that right wow okay so yeah, yeah so i think so the <laughs> the ratio is still 60% and out of those 98% don't know that yeah. they are lactose intolerant but problems. this is what i read like i was like wow how is it even possible because uh, cuz we really? don't get tested for it so if you think about 60% of indian population that's lactose intolerant you would not even think of getting tested for something like that that's one two it is mostly undiagnosed because the symptoms would be breakouts right you're getting a lot of acne or there's indigestion but people don't connect that with consumption of dairy for example maybe and like you said a lot of trainers or nutritionists would actually advise you to eat eat curd or you know drink more milk or to yeah. um double down on paneer consumption so there's this whole lactose malabsorption but there's also lactose intolerance so intolerance is i think maybe what you had that your body would just completely reject milk yeah a maladaptation is when you have these other symptoms and other side effects that so your body um, doesn't process it well if you're eating something every day or drinking something there is a side effect whatever you consume okay even with the water also you can't hydrate more than no too much of anything is bad yeah so i think it's just a, you have to think about a long term thing you know Uh, yeah what is going to happen so which i don't want like you know I, i don't want to stop my game i don't want to stop what i'm doing so milk was like it's easy to give up somewhere you somewhere. think so yeah because you have a lot of options what oat milk options? almond milk that caju milk and you had that back in the day as well when you uh, uh, stopped almond milk was there nowadays there are a lot of milks oh nowadays that you can make milk out of anything, anything. i think so but yeah uh, but yeah with that story um, so there was a, a group of kids uh, in the rural area we just went for some research and they just uh, uh, said like you know that is cow and this cow gives milk yeah and we are not going to consume that because that's not our mother this is what i heard and i was like wow <laughs> This kid is actually like you know I should bring him and like definitely but people him. don't make that connection you're so right about that we don't yeah. think that that cow is someone else's mother and that milk is meant for its own baby and not yeah. for us and I I've n- I never thought about it that way as well so when I first went vegan yeah. I had to learn the fact that we're the only mammals that drink milk from other mammals and no other mammal does that and that was pretty shocking yeah you you don't see a baby giraffe drinking milk from an elephant for example yeah so you know it was questioning why are we the only ones doing this and how how is this okay uh i think society this is how we are raised this yeah. is how what we learn and this is what we are actually adapting right um media some taboos uh, advertisement yeah so um culture as you mentioned as well coming from a maharashtrian household uh see the thing is there are always way outs i mean with this 
food also food industry but uh, what was your what, tell me about energy levels recovery performance mm-hmm. agility all of these things after you switch to being vegan mm, see uh, i think games start with your mind first and ends with the mind so it just uh, I I played a lot of matches with the injuries. I still train with my injuries at the moment. Uh but I feel it just you how you're actually looking at the thing. Right? Uh if you're feeling if you're eating a rice like every day but you're feeling like fully stomach and you're playing it's good at it like you know you don't have to be so specific all the time. This is what I learned in my journey like I was so hard on myself. you know uh, uh and which i think you also realize like you know i have some routines set, yeah. uh, set by my coaches and parents but i was so hard and i i still I, i somewhere i am um being like um, i have to do it at any cost i have high expectations from me and, and this this actually hurts yeah we lot. are our harshest critics so i was being very hard on myself but nowadays i am not but uh, I think about the calories. I think about the test nowadays. I mean, sometimes there is a testless food. I have to eat for just to, it, it's a protein, it's a carbs, it's a fiber. Now what do, what do you eat now? Normal food. A Which normal is? food. Yeah, it's just like bakri, chapati, rotis, sabzi. What about meals. protein? You get from dal. You get from nuts. You get from tofu. You get from uh, quinoa. You there are there are multiple options. But I'm not a bodybuilder, right? I don't have to look certain way that uh, oh I have to gain certain weight. Yeah. Uh, there is no weight category in my game, right? Mm-hmm. I have to recover faster. I have to run faster. And was that significantly better after you went vegan? Uh, because I'm eating a lot of carbs, right? Carbs break down to glycogen cells, easy. That's why you eat a lot of rice. You you eat li- rice because there's a glycogen cells. You eat you drink glucon D when there's a dehydration comes. There's a glycogen cells. There's a conversion. I'm eating a lot of CPs called creatine proteins, and so that breaks down to ATP. That breaks down a lot of things. So I have I I I did like that sports science thing uh, during the lockdown. Like I'm from USA, <laughs> uh, but uh, just for myself, I really wanted to know that you know what are the breakdowns, how I can actually change my game from here, because uh, playing professional is a different thing, right? You're not playing yeah. on a club level. going and playing for two hours and just um, yeah. uh, chit chatting and going home every time when you stepping out of court you are disturbed hmm you just like you know today was not my day and what i can improve so that started yeah. very early years yeah. there are a lot of people mock you for going vegan there are a lot of people try to convince you to still continue eating meat or dairy um okay so they so the people i think they are afraid of i don't know why but uh, they just have some persona that i know i'm so aggressive as a human being <laughs> if i did something to him he'll come back to you but which i which is wrong but i i'm being more quiet on court and being more quiet uh, during my workplaces like whatever i do and so they have some uh, thought process like you know he don't even talk much so how we are going to so if you are more, more uh, jolly person they're going to uh, have a jokes about you or they're going to do something but your nutritionist or your trainer no one came up to you and said or other uh, my nutritionist other players to mention matter. multiple times and she convinced my mother also like you know all the vegan players eats and uh, and then there are few names in this industry which they recommend her and they eating so she convinced me that like you know you should even try that you know it's so she this. was supportive of you going plant based no she was not there are a lot of vegan athletes and the reason they describe themselves as vegan athletes or with the word vegan as an adjective or as an identity is because one they want to prove that you can still perform at the same level on a plant based diet without consuming meat or dairy two to normalize that you can be a vegan athlete yeah. and three to grow the movement to make it okay for other people to follow that and somehow seek inspiration from that way of living as well uh see i mean i don't know like how many people are actually promoting their bios or like you know talking about veganism but uh, see the thing is if you're doing something for yourself then you're not going to be more uh, you know going to promote such things right 
if i said like you know i love uh, doing crossfit you know i can't uh, write it down like you know i'm crossfitter or i'm not going to promote like you know i, I do only crossfits you know i don't like gym and all so in vegan also there are a lot of people who are following keto there are a lot of people who are just following only carb diet so it's just it doesn't make sense to me i don't know like you know i'm not pointing out anyone and uh, i'm not being more um, it depends open. if it's yeah. because being vegan or veganism is more than just a diet it's a lifestyle right it's not just what you consume but it's also what you wear and what you use and i'm sure for you that applies in mm-hmm. and and i'd love to know this do you use animal products in your gear no any any leather anything that derived from an animal no okay so there is options you have uh, this is what comes with like you know veg non veg vegan thing so yeah mm, most of the tennis players goes with the leather grip the leather strings so the grip <clears> on your <throat> racket that's yeah. that's usually in leather? a grip not in, outer in grip. the grip inner grip inner grip is like so we have a two layers sorry inner grip inner grip so one is like original grip which is leather grip sometimes okay sometimes it's a rubber grip and then you come up with the over grip which is normal grip it's not like uh, that is there are multiple options this fabric this towel uh yeah but towel is like fabric towel comes goes with the badminton oh yeah. i'm bringing my badminton mm, into this yeah, sorry yeah. what what are the tennis so, grips it's just a normal like you know um, I, i i don't know the material name but it's definitely not it's a, just fabric yeah okay but there's leather as well um yeah inner grip not the out, inner. Out, out, outside outdoors never leather nope. what are other uh strings uses of leather strings for leather yeah uh most of the top players use a lot of leather strings i don't know that the string was made out of yeah. an animal yeah. derivative yeah they do uh i don't know what is the science but most of the t- tennis players which they are using they mention that you know they get good spin good feel but uh, i never used so i don't know okay so the yeah. strings are leather the inner grip is leather yeah what about uh clothing no no it's all good shoes no normal so you've never used any animal product even no. even in your gear or with no, your with your racket and your equipment you have options right like you know what do you use instead uh polyester strings polyester string is be- much better uh because i have to change my string every session and this you happens with strings every session ah uh, yeah every day like you know with this tension goes down then i have to just restring it i have to cut it and my stringing guy goes with the new string do you endorse mock meat like do you think mock meat is a good alternative to the animal mm-hmm. protein see i do on a professional level yes uh, on the personal level i mean if it's in the uh, ma- media in the market also i will be like let's go in the market what are actually you are selling hmm. rather than what you want to make other pe- people should believe that you're selling you know okay. that will give us a good confidence that we are eating this hey, it lo- it tastes like chicken because when we mention about that like you know it tastes like a chicken that means we used to chi- eat chicken you will love it try now they just why i mean i think it's meant to get people off chicken if you love the taste and texture of chicken and you want you want to do that without killing the chicken and if that appeals to you and if i'm making a replica version of that i mean I, i'm not sure how, how aware you guys are about this but the you know, vegan brands at vegan industry is not growing yeah it's it's not i mean it do, before the lockdown it was booming really good hmm. after the lockdown it's not going up you know there are difficulties funding raise and there's, yeah, there's a lot, lot of, of issues it's not just fundraising it's yeah so i mean we we are actually uh, responsible for that like because we are trying to replicate something and uh, someone who like pork and we putting some this is a pork substitute and uh, why you know because we are promoting that thing if someone even don't know what is chicken taste like you know he will be like ki mai try karke dekhta hu what is the chicken taste like because i'm 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 jain i'm gujarati or xyz person i'm not talking about the caste but i'm just talking about some kind of a um uh religious or uh, some rituals which i'm following or i'm just following be- because of my family and they don't eat any animal okay because of i read somewhere it, it 
it this is tastes like a chicken but it's not chicken try it once and this is the tagline for one of the brand and i i mean i will be like okay i'm going to eat this but i will like uh, it's good but and i'm i'm going to talk about this in front of my friends and will be like are the chicken it tastes much better than this okay let me try boom you gone you see so what are we actually marketing what are we doing i i mean see because of i build one one brand which is my company doesn't mean that i'm going to tell 1000 people that how to promote their companies because they know the better but this is my perspectives are okay. i think yeah different different perspectives because the people that do it do it for exactly the opposite of that which is if you eat chicken there are top guys a, i mean sorry to cut you yeah. but there are top guys in this uh, big industry in india yeah. by the way they have a big social media following they have a big fan base they 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 started with their own startup i know i know exactly what you who you're talking about as well. oh, where it is yeah no no i know i know exactly who you're talking for about for them so. it's i think zero if, uh, efforts to raise the funds zero efforts to put money Ooh, where are they hmm. i think i heard good things when no, they started no no bad i think bad taste bad branding see the thing is no great marketing whatever a lot of reasons but so yeah you you need to understand i mean this is what we are into this right like we are re- doing research we are understanding this marketing strategies and gimmicks but it's a wrong way we are going against the flow and con- convincing people so what's the way to get people to stop people from eating meat and converting to plant based diet according to you okay why is like uh, still is uh, you know um, alu matter is uh, still uh, famous they are not promoting it. if alu matter is tasting like a mushroom by the way sometimes right i mean this is what i i, I felt you know if i'm meeting matter and alu at the same time na i'll taste like it, it tastes like mushroom why it even they are not promoting like you know taste like mushroom but it's alu alu matter so name it what it is just what it is like you know this is this is green green go sell it sell it as a green right you know okay you don't have to sell it as a oh, this will be like i mean maybe change the advertisement or promote as like you know what what are the benefits you're getting yeah rather than oh it tastes like this but they have a less proteins come on like nobody's going to eat it right whenever i i just check the bag i i, I check the you know this content it's like oh only 17 grams but if i'm uh, uh, eating the ch- chicken breast 32 grams so it's a big difference right you know you can't make a fool out of it i mean uh, there is a one amazing video which i watched this morning and they just said like you know there is no influencer anymore you know people are not going to influence like this in this generation because people are so aware people are know what they are eating people know what they are watching people know th- the factual thing if we are discussing they will google something okay what is the real factor there is no like uh, in other times you know if the sharuk is talk- food farmer yeah this guy remand mhm did you see like he went after how much sugar bon vita has yeah and people didn't know people actually don't know how much yeah, sugar yeah he's doing all the thing by, by the way bolte hain uh, he's like ki sabki poll khol raha hai wala yeah that's what i mean so i yeah. actually would disagree but just saying that i think a lot of people don't know what they eat yeah if you speak about the vaccine as well a lot of people didn't know what was in the vaccine but the same thing they tell you about plant based protein or um or no way to coach actually uh, uh, he was banned if you guys know that he was uh, mm-hmm. suspended from the tennis tournament because he was not taking vaccine Yeah, but it just goes to show that a lot of people actually don't know what they're consuming. If you look at processed food and ultra processed food, for that matter, your packet of chips, noodles, people don't know what's in it. Some of the people, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of nutrition and what you eat as an athlete, take me through what your day looks like. So it depends if I'm on off season. Uh, off season comes with a lot of carbohydrates and a lot of rice and pasta mixtures. especially spaghetti which is my current favorite food <laughs> uh, it's a go to food for me comfort uh, food yeah and parathas and such a things but yeah I, i start morning like with the fruits and nuts and lot of water more like to go with hydration drinks mm. which i follow i mean there are a lot of hydration drinks it's not only one which i'm consuming 
and some multivitamins some tablets uh, so then just a training because early morning i have like around 7:30 to 8 am morning training so i don't eat much uh, i have to just run so i can't eat more food but after training i go with the more you know south indian food which is my another favorite so i'm as i mentioned you know i'm i'm foodie um, yeah. so i like so uh, so idli dosa in the yeah, morning there's a puri idli yeah yeah it's amazing <laughs> oh wow but yeah i mean then this is a homemade food uh, you know uh, bhakri is very common nowadays yeah. uh, and easy to digest light food millets are making a comeback and how yeah yeah but i mean the, all the vegetables normal salads and again the hydration part i i'm taking more protein plant based protein which i'm consuming so so supplements yeah, yeah. and then again good nap and gym or training session and then yeah and the day ends with the good food and these people are sitting there like you know they hang out with me in the night <laughs> i eat, we 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 go to thali places we go to some punjabi restaurants and eat. do you find vegan food in thali places yeah. and in punjabi restaurants 100% what is, 100%. what does that look like what sorry what does that look like what is a punjabi thali or a, oh, or a vegan not, thali like punjabi food like? is a different but thali is a different thing and thali have like more rajasthani and indian food and punjabi food is like uh, uh recently you were talking about the soya chap yeah yes. that's vegan amazing <laughs> trust me uh, so i chop uh, sarso ka saag makke ki roti and all mm. it's too good I and mean, and now i'm feeling like you know i should just go home and <laughs> order that but yeah yeah but in the thali also i'm just removing this curd item and milk item that's it and then it's this all good if it's not cooked in ghee no they don't uh, they are very very honest actually you know they were very clear like you know don't eat this uh, yeah. i mean just okay so yeah I mean, there are a lot of foods options in thali. You remove no, the dahi and you remove you remove the curd product. You remove uh, the curd and the milk product. Milk product, yeah. Just milk product. This is not cooked in ghee. Yeah. Yeah. But it's all amazing. Like you, you get multiple var- varieties and. What about when you're traveling and during a tournament? What do you eat then? Uh, I think that time we have a lot of vegan restaurants i think you know it's not in india at the moment you know there are i mean we have to travel a lot i mean in india and especially in mumbai also like you know uh, if you're not in bandra you're not getting multiple options i mean uh, if you're in pawai you get like one or two restos or they have a specific vegan menu but which is not favorable for you you're like oh wow i'm i'm, I'm not going to eat this i will travel here and there but um, internationally I think airport yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of options um, so I mean, traveling and being on tour or yeah, yeah. Not, the tournament yeah. has not been a deterrent for you no it's all actually good for me you know it's just more comfortable that you know i'm getting yeah. multiple other options also yeah. so much of our indian food is naturally and originally yeah. vegan yeah speaking of my rashtrian households mm-hmm. i grew up in kolhapur as well and my go to vegan food is still till date bhakri matki usal wow bengan bharta akha masoor misal yeah. pav if the pav is vegan <laughs> if they tell yeah. you outright that they don't use milk yeah. in that so many of these maharashtrian dishes mm-hmm. are naturally vegan yeah i'm sure you grew up eating those staple eating yeah. those staple maharashtrian dishes as well um just it's just a culture right and uh, i mean we are blessed that we we are like you know we are promoting by veg and vegan culture you know uh, because i don't know about other cultures but we have some certain days we don't eat non veg yeah. in families and we eat all veg so it's very common that you know we get a lot of options all the time so yeah sabudana khichdi i don't know how i missed that that's oh vegan. god i mean <laughs> if if i'm allowed to show my phone i'll show you the history like yesterday morning i was searching where i can get sabudana khichdi on zomato by the way <laughs> because uh, there's a one place in pune and i was talking to my people like you know when we we will travel to pune for the next uh, event uh, like my my company events and uh, we will be eating this we are going to we will go here we will go there and there is one place in um, uh, i forgot the name um, some some hospital rishikesh or so some dinanath mangeshkar hospital if i'm not wrong mm. I, i'm bad with the names but yeah there is a hospital near the apollo um, 
showroom okay so they have a small khichdi house <laughs> oh lord <laughs> what a sabdana khichdi i mean i will i mean when i went first time i ate like four plates and yeah that's what i mean it's so so amazing. sabdana khichdi is vegan your thali yeah. peters vegan yeah poha it's poha upma is everything all, all like all that. the breakfast food that's, what is there is nothing in in the breakfast we all eat vegan food what about dessert oh god <laughs> I better not talk about it <laughs> because uh, I know after this Sally cast, like a lot of people are gonna text me, like you know, you eat a lot of sweet and how come this and that. But um, I have like so many. I mean, th- now I'm What's craving. What's your go-to vegan dessert? Ah, uh, jalebi. Jalebi cooked in oil. Yeah, I mean, yeah, jalebi the, cooked in oil is vegan. Yeah. A lot of times they cook it's it in jalebi now. Jalebi is all but, all yeah. vegan, by the way. I mean the. Uh, So I have struggled with that. So many times I've gone around here in Bombay and I've asked, okay. "What do you cook the jalebi in?" And a lot of these sweet shops have started cooking it in ghee. I don't know why, but jalebi could have just been left aside, and they could have just made it in oil and kept that vegan for us. But okay, uh, there's a one place called Methkut. It's a uh, Maharashtrian food, and they have like good uh, modak and all. So that is a good go-to place. I did not know that modak was vegan. It's, I mean. I'm surprised, but yeah, it is. <laughs> it's the best sweet dish in the world, and right. I think most of my college friends know me for that. For eating modak. Yeah, I finished all defense. The if there's a modak, like if there's a twenty you know, or. So if you if you had to pick between playing tennis versus eating modak, as a competition, what would you pick? It's so difficult. It's so difficult. Trust me, because I'm so foodie, and I'm. I, I to be very honest, people don't even find me lazy. They find me that I'm so active. I'm. I'm working really hard towards my goal and all. But I'm really lazy. If someone give me like bed and three days off, I'll That's sleep. That's it. You're gone. Yeah, and uh, this is my habit, and this is how I operate. By the way, but uh, I'll choose moda. To be very honest, you choose moda. Yeah, yeah, hundred times. <laughs> I choose food over anything. So we've got jalebi, we've got moda. Yeah, anything but moda is hundred percent on top. Not jalebi will be like be my priority. If there is a moda, no way. Moda wins over everything. Everything. Else. What about puram poli? Puram poli is yeah, obviously puram poli. So rank them for me. Rank moda, jalebi, and puram poli. Moda, puram poli, jalebi. That order. Yeah, yeah, simple. <laughs> and there are a lot of other options also, like you know. Uh, We call it like kobrachi barfi. Mm. Ah, coconut barfi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's still in my bag. Um, it's in your bag. Like yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shankar paya. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There are a lot of foods actually. I am I am foodie as I mentioned. I don't so. I don't even know we had that many desserts in our Maharashtrian cuisine that were vegan. There are a lot of foods. There are a lot of options. Mm. There are a lot of options. What do you think when? What do you respond when people tell you that veganism is expensive or unaffordable? Uh, I mean, people who don't know the options or they didn't explore, or they have a taboo, like you know, or this people like you know, only rich people can have this. Yeah. But uh, I just explain them in an easy way that go to the thali place, order the thali, remove milk products, and eat. And they're like, okay. <laughs> Then this is how I convey to them, and there's nothing. Of, uh, I mean, I, I, this is what actually uh, I, I think. This is what you mentioned in the earlier conversation also about the veganism and the food and this. You know how you are actually taking it as a, you know, in a professional level. We are actually talking about in a special manner, right? You know, we are actually putting that in the pedestal. Like uh, it's so big thing, you know, being yeah. a vegan athlete. How come this is just a normal thing? Because I don't even take it in that way. That oh. I'm vegan. I have yeah. to be something different. Oh, just watch me. No, this this food suits me, and that's and it's slowly working for you. Yeah, and I think it just comes from this misconception that you have to consume meat and you have to consume dairy to be athletic, to have that endurance, that strength. But there is a one top athlete uh, who recently who 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 recently signed with the one of the top vegan brand, long back. Uh, and then he did one of the one podcast, and I, I'm I'm sure you know that he did a podcast, and he said like you know I started eating meat because it's not happening for me, and that brand actually put a lot of money yeah. on that advertisement. You know that which brand I'm talking yeah. about. So I was like wow, and I'm trying to get in touch with them, and they were like oh. you know we have already signed one of one athlete, and I was like. Hmm. 
and after three days, I watched that podcast. I was like, "Wow, <laughs> this is so good." But I didn't approach them again. I was like, "You let it be. I'm not going to do that because they don't know their values." You know. No, but know that's. Them, so. I think that's what I mean. That's where the misconception comes from. That yeah. it's your. It's either your trainers pushing you to consume meat, or yeah. meat and dairy. It's a uh, nutritionist, gym trainers might be your peers, might be people in the space, or the fact that you may not know the right amount of nutrition that you need when you switch from. eating meat and dairy to mm-hmm. then going plant based so yeah. i think there's a lot of care and calculation and science and math that goes into it that needs to be factored in um see the thing is we are making really complicated like we are not as like we but you know things are really simple uh playing tennis or running or doing anything in your life is so simple we are making so complicated we have so many options we have so many faces we have so many thoughts that we follow we have so many things that uh, as actually affecting us and uh, we are making really complicated like it's so simple what is so difficult about it though do you have other people writing to you that hey you know i've tried this vegan lifestyle and it's not working for me do you get any questions I have filled my DMs and email box with the same questions, which is uh, how you're actually following veganism and uh, how you're recovering faster, how you're getting good muscles, and X Y Z X Y Z. And I was like, it's not difficult to be very honest. You just have to chuck down two things in your diet. That's it. Everything is available. And they were like, they were feeling like so cold. Like I'm giving them such replies. Begin like just a normal reply, right? Like just remove two things, which is <laughs> meat and dairy, <laughs> and this is normal food, right? Why you want to think like okay, this, this is so different and uh, yeah, because people don't know what they would eat if they would remove meat and dairy out of their diet. If that's your, if that's the hero of the meal that you're eating, if that chicken is the hero of your meal, and if you remove that, for a lot of people, they don't know what they would substitute that with. I mean. I I literally had a chance eating a Jain pulao. I don't know what is the difference between like veg pulao and Jain pulao, but maybe onion, there's some yeah yeah garlic, oh, right 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 ginger potato yeah any, any but they're making things. a really underground veg underground right. root vegetables right 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 so but they have a, such a good flavor and they're doing it. I I I don't even see anyone who's like promoting it. I'm eating Jain food. Go eat Jain food. Go eat. Do this and uh, so why we are doing it? Because uh, I I mean not I'm not targeting anyone, but uh, in this industry I think you also observe a lot of people are doing just sick for the branding. People know them just for that. You know, um, holding a. post or talking about the animal cruelty not going to change or because they have only one motto because uh, this is what you do right like you know i mean this is what i used to do like in the class uh, when i was young like you know if then they they remember me for playing tennis then i'll just talk about tennis yeah in the society like people That's be like something becomes your identity yeah and this like oh you're activist yes Hey, why is even hitting that animal? Oh, this is so poor baby. Come here, and then after maybe they they're eating chicken at their houses. So I don't like that pretend game. Uh, but in this industry, we have a lot of faces. We have a lot of people. We have a lot of brands. Is there any advice you'd give someone who's trying to be more vegan and is trying to eliminate meat and dairy from their diet? Ah, uh, see, the thing is, I'm not being really harsh on anyone. To be very honest, I'm not. Uh, the that person that you know if you want to eat until unless he's not realizing you know you can't do anything if your parents are telling you to go and do homework go and study because the future is like this if you hang out with these people or if you uh, follow such habits you you will end up doing this until unless you are not realizing you you, you know you, you can't change so i i'm not their parent i'm not someone if i if they're considering me as a leader or if they're considering me someone who they look up to but uh, i'm not i'm not that person that you know you have to follow such a things i will say yeah eating vegan food and following such a such a lifestyle will help you in the near future and for the longest run in your career at any any other profession 
but uh, this is what my perspectives are yeah you know i'm i'm not going to tell them you know if you're not eating this then you are not going to sit on my table or you are not going to talk to me or i'm not going to drink water in your bottle or whatever it is like you know i'm not going to come here to your house this is not me i'm just uh, if someone asks me then i'd be like keep don't eat it try this try for a few days what is your mindset like right before you start playing uh, okay so it's a habitual you know f- um, f- from my childhood i'm being more aggressive towards my goal and more uh, alert and more focused i would say if i want something then i'll work for it like you know just i, I don't think so what's the inner dialogue what goes on inside your head right before you get on that court i think i just want to be better every day like you know rather than yesterday just be me is that a mantra is that yeah, 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 you yeah. tell yourself 100% what because is that? after three generation people not going to remember you this is what i heard in the, some some podcast after three generations nobody's going to remember you the the naysayers the haters going to forget what you did and they all eventually they will die <laughs> and uh, so do it for yourself so i know your mantra before you start a match but what mm. about when you how do you overcome loss do you take that personally or how do you recover 100 times uh, i'm i'm still in the process of learning that you know how i really how i really wanted to uh, pursue my losses and uh, how i want to overcome but i i usually take day days off i don't think about tennis i i I just uh, think I don't even think about anything I just go out and relax myself and uh, don't even think about like you know what I really wanted to do for the next few days do you and beat yourself up no. over what happened do you replay the scenario no. what you could have done differently no it's already happening during the points by the way so I'm really I, I think I'm better that in that game that I I understand what is actually happening and what is not working in that moment you understand it's you not you already like, know in that second yeah. as soon as it's happened yeah. so the beating up process happens in that moment so during the breaks you get time to think over it about your plans about the strategy about his strengths about your weaknesses or about the weather about the crowd about the surface and etc etc you every game every point is give you some kind of fractions of seconds and minute to think about what exactly happened so you don't have to think after the match what the match is over you have done like nothing you will just take down some notes like okay maybe my first service didn't went well i didn't run faster my shoulder was no, not moving properly i was not in the present moment so x y z factors but uh, after the match i don't even take it in that like oh you don't take it to heart i do but it's not like you know i will express that I mean, uh, you'll journal it out. Yeah, I do that, and uh, I'll sit, I'll think, but I don't express like you know, uh, if I did this, this will happening, and maybe the scenario will be different, but uh, never happened. How do you bounce back from that? Just start again with a new formula. Find your own rhythm. Find some some of the other ways, and this is how it works, right? Like, I mean, as a uh, before we were talking uh, you know this life and tennis is so similar for me you know you get second chance again the second day and uh, keep going with the new thing how did you get into entrepreneurship what are the projects that you're working on right now oh, yeah. and what's the path ahead uh so recently i have a one company called esper sports management uh the second company which is in the process called esper event management and third is already lined up we are having a meetings with lot of new staff members and hiring process is happening with which is coco production that is going to focus on making movies advertisements and documentary we are currently focusing on the sports so i'll start with the coco production what are we going to do and what is the current project we are doing the underdogs sports documentary yeah. that is showing the same uh, as you are doing the mindset thing the uh, question things and psychology you know, the, yeah the journey you know um, and i really like about you and this podcast that you were going through the journey you know the most of the questions which i heard in my in the last podcast or interviews then never get into that you know what I actually did and what is my thought process it's so important to yeah. know someone's journey and where they started from because yeah. sometimes you just see the end result you see where that person is at yeah. his absolute peak 
and there's no blueprint to follow so if someone's trying to get onto that same journey and follow that same path it's important yeah. to know that you didn't always start off with 72 titles to your name it started with a lot of losses yeah. and highlighting those losses is so important for someone going through maybe exactly that and for them to not give up at that stage mm-hmm. that you've been there you've overcome those losses and that's why you are where you are today there is there are two ways i'm i'm playing b tennis i'm playing tennis you know the both things are completely different but represent racket sports and and representing uh, india yeah so the thing is it's a by product um uh, i mean i love my country i love representing my country and uh, i'm enjoying it you know I, I, this is this was my dream like you know as i uh, so i'm still focusing on making more ranking better more points and uh, there is no such i'm you know there is no final goal right now yeah what are you hoping to get out of it uh since it's too soon to talk about it like you know uh, what i'm actually looking at and how i'm how i'm pursuing that thing because it's a long way to go still you know i mean it's not like ki, it's it's tomorrow it's not yeah it's just everyday process a lot have, of training rigorous yeah. training i have to be more fitter i have to be more sharp with my strokes i have to be more mental prep as well yeah any advice to anyone who wants to compete at that same level whose yeah. dream is to be at that platform mm-hmm. anything you would like to tell them that you've learned from your journey so far mm, this is what i mentioned in the uh, in a lot of meetings with my teammates i said like you know uh, i i created my own path i created my own formula so you don't need to follow anyone else you know uh, maybe drinking black coffee three times a day helps me maybe not for you so it's not like if i'm doing it you should do that so uh, you have your own ways you're coming from the different background different region different uh, blood groups different thought process so my journey is not going to help you what's next for you what's coming up in the next few months and what are you looking forward to okay uh, so tournaments current tournaments and this first step is uh, getting really fit at that level you know i'm working on my fitness right now um tremendously um working on my routines which is i think my uh, thought process my energies are so many places at, at at this moment i can't channelize my energy at one go which is like business you know, documentary films um, my own new startup and multiple things That's are going, going on so uh, but yeah i'm trying my best to get a good rhythm at my routines and with my routine sorry but and uh, finding my new formula you know to perform and to have a great balance with the sports also so there's a lot on your plate yeah. apart from veg protein and all the other vegan food that you're eating yeah along with that Hundred percent. Um, this is life, you know. I mean, I don't like to sit at home, like for the weeks or hundred days, like you know, doing yeah. nothing. What about the dating aspect? Does tennis have any like connection to how like people view you, or have there been any like apart from mm-hmm. topics about mm-hmm. apart from questions about veganism in your DMs? Have yeah. there been any proposals? Have there been any spicy messages whatsoever? if i even if even if i think about it i i don't have any chance to think right what do you mean like i mean i have a girlfriend obviously the people i have life you know yeah. and uh, i don't want that you know to be uh, yeah there is a fan base is good but you have to be very focused right <laughs> so you don't focus on the fan base it's what you're saying mm, not at all okay as of for now <laughs> so that's not part of the fame that you're enjoying that's coming with the with the spot. Yeah, it's already there like you know. I mean, yeah. you have to deal with it somewhere. But you're you're dealing with it. You're not deal- enjoying it. Yeah, I mean, why I mean, so the thing is if you know your ways then why you will open the multiple other portals? Not <laughs> <laughs> the portals. Right. I mean, uh, it just uh, Is your girlfriend vegan? No. Do you have any plans of making her vegan? Oh no, she's trying. to okay. be very honest she's doing her best she is uh, trying once in a year 
she's trying once <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i've been there some months like you know to follow some fast and some rituals yeah which is doing currently but yeah but i think you know uh, most of the time i'm not being vocal about the dating on my social media because there's a following affections right yeah of course they just comment section will vanish <laughs> the dm section will be zero uh people stop approaching and i i i i feel like you know being more private about your relationship with hmm. the people that you are with you know that actually helps you to definitely do I you mean, think we could be like a good cult see that the could thing just... is uh, i believe that i mean this is what i believe that i'm good at uh, convincing people okay hmm. so cult leader vibes <laughs> maybe in your future do you have a crush in the sport is there a tennis player that you that you have like a tiny crush on ah uh, or a big crush on doesn't have to be tiny not really i mean there used to be i mean but maria sharapova is now retired but yeah she was my huge crush yeah like, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so no crush at the moment no what no. about roger versus nadal so i think um Roger comes with the grace and Nadal comes with lot lot of aggressions, you know. But uh, I I chose Nadal over Roger every time. Mm, we have a, some similarities. Uh, we come. I mean, so what are, are the similarities? I, I mean, common pointers are like you know we love clay courts. I love clay surface. He's a king of clay. Um, he loves to grunt. I mean, that's the voice which I do. uh during my matches I, during the tough points I, i do a lot yeah this is what i enjoy and uh, his his footwork is amazing which i admire and uh, he always comes back with the injuries he he's he, you look up to that as well yeah 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 i've been uh, I, there is no doubt i mean if someone asks me uh, in front of roger also i will consider like you know yeah. rafa someone which so I you don't have a crush but you've got a hero and that's rafa uh Okay so I don't have any idol in tennis to be very honest I I don't even look up to someone I really wanted to be like them or I'm following their techniques or their um, strategies uh yes I admire them uh they motivate me mm-hmm. but um I have uh, many other athletes like you know Conor McGregor Floyd Mayweather uh Muhammad Ali I mean these are the thing uh, I mean these are the people actually actually motivates yeah. me a lot and these those are my idols those are my idols bruce lee arnold so they yeah. actually uh what still keeps you vegan today ah i just uh, the long term goals you know um i know the effects and uh, whatever we're doing today like you know if you're going to the gym if you're running 10 miles a day or something like that you know that we know the benefits so that's simple as it for me that having the long term benefits and uh, this is what i like so that gives me a mental peace and sense of who, who i am so yeah cool we should you thank you so much for doing this with thank me you. today thank you for having this conversation and i wish you all the best you've got a massive milestone coming ahead of you yeah. and i wish you all the success all Thank the accolades so yeah. all the achievements all the all the points and i i hope you knock it out of the park yeah representing india at such a such a big scale thank you so much for being here today thank you for having me and thank you for your all team thank Pleasure. you thank you